mathematical modeling has provided an increased understanding in cause, basic structure, and dynamical behavior aspects of the tornado. It uses mathematical analysis to analyze flow of parameters such as radial, azimuthal, and axial velocities along with pressure, and uses these parameters to predict and estimate the speeds with which tornadoes proceed and the amount of destruction they can cause through pressure estimates. These velocities in steady axisymmetrical vortex motion can be thought of in a cylindrical frame of reference with these formulas. Taking these governing equations of motion and using mathematical manipulation, we arrive at the 3D present model where eta is the variation. With this model, as eta increases, radial velocity fluctuates and axial velocity decreases. As a muscle velocity reaches its maximum value when eta equals 10 and then decreases as eta grows larger. From these velocities, we can also calculate other values pertaining to tornadoes. From the conservation of angular momentum, it is possible to calculate tornado wind speeds from wind rotational velocities of the mesocyclone. For example, if we know that the radius of the mesocyclone is 4 miles, the radius of the tornado is 528 feet, and rotational velocity of the mesocyclone is 3 miles per hour, we can use R1 V1 equals R2 V2 to find the rotational velocity of the tornado to be 120 miles per hour. The average human is unable to stand without holding on to something in wind greater than or equal to 74 miles per hour on the Buford wind speed scale. This person would have no chance in 120 mile per hour winds, a possible F2 on the F scale. In fact, any tornado categorized as an F2 or greater is considered to be strong or violent, and any day that has at least one of these tornadoes is called a significant tornado day. Using data from Tom Grizzuli's book on significant tornadoes, Harold Brooks has determined the sample mean days of significant tornadoes per year in the U.S. to be about 53, and the sample standard deviation to be 9 in a 75-year period of this data set. Assuming these sample values to be correct, we can form confidence intervals for the expected number of significant tornado days per year. With a 1 minus alpha 100% confidence level, we can use the sample mean x bar equals 53, sample standard deviation s equals 9, and the confidence interval x bar plus or minus t of alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. To calculate a 95% confidence interval, we use alpha equals 0.05, which means we need to find t of 0.025 with 74 degrees of freedom. Since n is large, we can approximate the t distribution with normal distribution. We then plug all of the variables into the equation to yield the confidence interval. So with 95% confidence, the number of significant tornado days per year will be between about 50.963 and 55.037 days. Mathematics has also allowed us to calculate the probabilities of having a significant tornado day as a function of the day of year. The raw data can be smoothed by applying a Gaussian to the values, determined by standard deviation. In this case, the data was smoothed by s equals 3 and s equals 15. The greatest probabilities occur around April, May, and June, which is similar to the probabilities of all tornado days, not just the significant ones. While the probability of having a significant tornado day in the U.S. is fairly high, the individual probability of getting hit by a tornado is small, 1 in 70 million. To put that into perspective, you are over six times more likely to get attacked by a shark while on a beach in the U.S. <laughs> Despite this, tornadoes are still a phenomenon to be feared. Mathematics helps us to diagram and understand tornadoes, and this gives us a certain power over them. But don't let that twist the fact that tornadoes are sometimes severe and hazardous.